What's going on everybody? In this video, we're going to do a few updates before our coming up race at Lime Rock Park. Alright, so what we're going to do in this one is we're going to obviously replace our splitter biscuits. You can see how thin they're getting. And these got so thin that we actually wore through a little bit of the outer edge of the splitter. So we'll go ahead and do a quick little repair on that. That's easy. Since the left side of the splitter wore down a little bit, um, one, keeping, keeping fresh ones of these on probably would have prevented that. Um, I might end up going up a turn on the driver's side of the car, especially because Lime Rock is, I think it's like seven rights and one left, especially on the downhill, you get a ton of compression under the car. So, you know, just again, fighting to keep the splitter as low as possible without scraping. So, yeah, let's knock those out. And then the other addition we're going to do, I mentioned it several videos ago but now that we kind of got the splitter situated for the most part we're going to end up doing flaps on the top of the tunnels right here on the outside all right and the the other thing we're going to do is the clevises for the um, splitter rods showed up so we can get rid we can get rid of our little single shear ones and put the you know put the nicer more proper hardware on there all right, so here you can see we got the splitter upside down on a, on a workbench. What we're gonna do is, it's such a small area, we're not gonna put a patch or anything on it. We're basically just gonna mix up a slurry just to replace some of the material that grinded away and that'll be fine for this. So in order to make a slurry, we're just gonna grab a piece of carbon We don't need much, so what we're gonna do is just kinda cut a little piece off. Basically just cut it. That's about it. So we just kinda want like a pile of carbon pieces basically. Now we're gonna mix our epoxy. We're only gonna mix about 20 grams or so of our fast epoxy. Now I don't know how good this is gonna come across, but what we're gonna do is start putting those carbon pieces in here to basically just sticking it up, almost making a paste. So that should be pretty good. Now we're gonna go put it on the splitter. All right, so there we go. It's more than was grinded away. A little bit extra won't hurt. All right, so one thing we're gonna knock out while the splitter's upside down is replace some of these scuff plates. This one is actually our splitter rod. So if you go back a few episodes, you'll kind of see how we ended up doing these. But this is a prime example of why we like to put the hardware coming from the top because when it wears away it's going to be really hard to get this in here to get this off this one isn't terrible but you can see if it really wore down how it would be a bit of an issue all right so it's kind of just spinning on me at this point all right let's go with a plan b All right, so now we should be able to just hold it with a flathead screwdriver. All right. 
So cutting a little slot in it wasn't too bad, but now I'm gonna show you how easy it is to replace one when it's installed like they're intended to be. All right, so on a new one, it's easy to see these little holes, which are put there on purpose to be able to hold this with a set of snap ring pliers. a new bolt, reuse the cone, and our new biscuit. There you go. Fixed. We're going to go ahead and knock these out end up swapping on the proper hardware and then we're going to let it sit overnight so that way oops, so that way the repair that we did can set up so then we can flip it over and kind of finish everything All right, so one thing we have to do real quick is repress these clevises onto the end of the rod ends. That was easy enough. Uh, we'll do the other two and then get these put back onto the splitter. All right, so I'll show you what we have going on. It might be really hard to see, but you can see that the bolt is a little bit too long and it's actually hitting the rod end, causing that to basically jam up. So we're just gonna space it out with some washers because I think that would be a little bit easier rather than trying to cut and shorten the bolt and mess up the threads on the end and all that stuff. So uh, we gotta do that probably across the other two as well. All right, so you can see the new uh, scuff plates here and here. These ones are on the left side of the car, or I'm sorry, the right side of the car. So there's still enough thickness left. I'm not gonna worry about changing these. Um, and then you can see how we ended up putting on the new clevises. And then also over here, you can see this dried up nice, tiny bit wavy, but That'll self-clearance as soon as it hits the track once or twice. All right, so I just made sure these were kind of lined up 
Um, I'm going to have to adjust the height because the height of these are different than the little single shear L brackets that I made. You can also you can also see we ended up using another splitter biscuit, drilled it out so the hole went through it and threaded into this clevis. If this clevis just was sitting on the carbon, if you remember to when we laid this up, it's only a thin layer of carbon with the core the foam core in it so just the clevis on there isn't really enough surface area and it could get tweaked easily I hope that kind of makes sense so that's why we ended up doing that just to kind of spread the load out a little bit all right so now what we're gonna do uh, we kind of got the biscuits and the rods and everything all squared away so we're finally going to get back to these splitter flaps which are sort of meant to go around about here to kind of help out the tunnel right here so we're going to end up probably pivoting it off of this end plate so that way we can get rid of this little you know bracket that we have right here so this will kind of hold it and we'll end up doing some sort of mount coming off of this tunnel up to it that will allow us to kind of easily just maybe flap this up or down to you know kind of tune the front down for us a little bit all right so here's how our flaps come we make them extra long just because you know you may have an extra long splitter or something and they're basically meant to be trimmed down to fit so this one's already roughly trimmed I'm gonna have to trim it more but you can kind of see how we only use that much of it <clears throat> so again the, these were parts designed by Kyle before he went to Mercedes you can see that there's actually some like curve and some shape to it and if you look at it it almost has a little bit of a resemblance how out here where my hand is holding to kind of the 2019 f1 front wings a little bit no let me know what you think sort of but anyway so we're going to cut these down get these mounted up and that will be our front end aero updates for the next race I think something else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bond, you can see I sort of attempted to put this little piece of aluminum strap between the two, because when I press on this, if I put the camera down and stop moving, it might work a little better. So if you watch this gap right here, you can see how much it opens. So I think getting this outer tunnel and inner tunnel kind of locked together, We'll tighten up this corner a little bit. Alright, so back to the flap. You can see how much movement this has right now. So hopefully once the flap is tied into this tunnel and supported and everything, it should kind of tighten all that up. So I think something right about there should work out well for us. Alright, so basically we're trimmed and fit. We know we're going to end up somewhere right around this area um, what we're gonna do is put a little L bracket right here so that's where this side is gonna pivot from and then we're gonna come up and off of the tunnel now remember we can't go to the bumper because taking this whole front end off the bumper needs to be its own separate piece so we're just gonna run like a little carbon bracket up from the tunnel up to the flap all right, so what I did was I cut a few of these little 90L brackets off of some extra gurney flap we have laying around. We're just gonna use these to basically hold the first little pivot point on the flaps. All right, so I'm gonna use a rivet just as kind of like a placeholder. So I'm probably gonna use a real small nut and bolt right here. So that way, this flap can kind of just be adjusted a little bit. I honestly don't know how much difference it's going to make. But yeah, it might be kind of something to tinker with if I'm struggling a little bit with front end downforce at some point. So I'm kind of happy with all, all that at the moment. All right, so we just grabbed some of our favorite thing in the world for making templates, just some heavy card paper. 
we're pretty much going to see if that stays by itself. All right, close enough. Um, run a bracket up off the side of this tunnel up to the top of the flap. So we're pretty much just going to trace out something we think will work to hold it. Um, it's going to need two points of holding and cut it out of some flat stock that we have back in our trim room. So here you can see my rough idea. So what we're gonna do is add a bracket up in the, the front here where my thumb almost is to allow it to pivot Whoops. up and down. So anyways, I'm gonna get it, kinda start bolting it, get it secured so we can kinda finalize this thing. All right guys, so I got a few holes drilled. I'm just going to slide some rivets in again sort of as placeholders. Alright so sort of as I expected doesn't quite line up perfect because as this articulates it goes it kind of like arches away from this. Um, so yeah I'm just going to kind of keep tinkering with it to get it a little bit more solid then we'll kind of like shape this up a little bit better rather than just being this hunk of carbon right here. All right, so I jumped ahead a little bit just to kind of get stuff mocked up. I swapped out the rivets for a set of uh, binding posts. I, I went over that a um, couple videos ago doing the splitter. You can see how we used larger ones for doing uh, mounting the end flap here and our tunnel. So if you're not familiar with what they are, they're just a small rounded head. Oh, the light's terrible on both sides since both sides of these will be seeing airflow as well as the bumper is going to be like right here we couldn't really have a nut and bolt it's getting a little bit tight right here so we're kind of loosely bolted up and everything so now you can like kind of really start to see you know what what I kind of want this thing to do so what we're gonna to have to do is bolt this in a way to kind of kick it kick it in a little bit to get a little bit closer right here uh, but once we put that next bracket on it what we might do is just have like a high medium low setting or something these aren't huge huge downforce generators so I think something that's slotted isn't going to be utilized but just having like two or three settings on this should be good so we're about buttoned up so you can see I pretty much just put a few holes there's four all together so that way the flap has four different adjustments but we're pretty much there when it's all uh, you know snug down I'm, I'm okay with this little bit of movement here um, this outer bit moves I don't know if I'm gonna put like an extra one out here or something you know I I don't know, that's a, that's a tricky one. So we'll, we'll, I'll think about that. But basically that's it. So we got our little bit of a mount coming up. I'll probably trim and shape this like round these like corners a little bit more, just make it look a little bit nicer. And then putting it back together. Whenever you use these little binding posts, make sure you put some Loctite on it uh, so they don't just kind of vibrate out on you. But otherwise that's about it for the splitter flaps. 
All right, so I just finished up this side. I didn't video any of it, obviously, because it's the exact same as the other side. So you can kind of see what we were going for. And then again, obviously, the adjustment holes. Um, I still got to, the bumper is just kind of, it's not clipped in, it's just kind of sitting there so I could make sure everything fits. It's pretty snug, pretty tight, pretty happy with everything. So yeah, so that's about it for the aero upgrades for Lime Rock. Alright, so here you can see how it is with the bumper off. I'm going to pull everything off, kind of clean it up. Like I said, reshape that to look a little bit better. But yeah, that's about it. While this is going, maybe I'll put a uh, picture across the screen of the CAD model Kyle did for us, uh, showing these maybe. But yeah, so it should help get that air out to the side of the car, working this tunnel a little bit harder. So that's kind of, you know, the gist of that. So there we go. So now what I'm going to do when I have these off to uh, kind of just touch them up and everything. I'm gonna patch some carbon in here to basically connect these two tunnels to stiffen up this whole outside corner. And then that's it. All right, so we got our epoxy mixed and a trip to our scrap bin. Got us a few patches of carbon. We are taped up on the backside. So that way, when we lay it up, epoxy won't just drip all down the backside or underneath of it or something. So that's about it. We're just gonna patch it up. So once this hardens, we'll just kind of trim this flush, you know, nice and nice and it up a tiny bit and we're done. All right, guys, that's about it for this one. Once that cures, like I mentioned, we're just going to kind of make a flush across the top. The uh, flat mounts are trimmed and finished. So once we end up uh, cleaning up the patches that we did, it's just bolt everything back together. We know everything should fit and we're off to Lime Rock. So that's about it. Now, Lime Rock is definitely an aero track. So that's why I wanted to get these done. I still have more stuff planned for the front aero, believe it or not. Um, and then it could just be balanced out by adding a little bit of wing angle. So the rear's fine. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it for this one. After this will be our weekend recap video. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm still going to be on the Toyos. Believe it or not, I'm going to be on old Toyos. So, you know, give it my best and see what happens. So, as always, guys, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.